So we have the jihad of the soul, which the Prophet said is the greatest struggle. We have jihad against the devil, and then we have jihad against an enemy. Now, I studied in the one of the oldest universities in the Muslim world. Um, next is Morocco, and then in, in, in Qum, Iran, you have three of these really old institutions. And there was a debate that took place, at least in my institution, um, amongst four of the uh, important schools of Islamic law out of the five or six. And the debate was, why are we allowed to fight? And this happened in the classical period, not in the contemporary period, in case someone says, oh, this is an apologetic you know, stance, this guy's trying to you know, pull the wool over our shoulders or whatever. You know. um, and what they said is basically that the Muslim is allowed to fight if their human rights are violated. That's basically the definition of jihad, that you're given permission to defend yourself if your life, your liberty, or your pursuit of justice are threatened. Right? Now, I don't really see how that differs with anything that you find in any other society. Does jihad mean that someone can walk into a mall in America and just kill innocent people? No. Does jihad mean that as an American citizen I could have, you know, uh, SJ S sudden jihad syndrome, flip out at Six Flags. You know, the classical scholars talked about this and they actually mentioned Imam uh, Ibn Qudamah, that was the name Ibn Qudamah. He, he said very clearly that the Muslim who lives amongst non-Muslims and attains what he considered at that time citizenship, which was considered a trust. They didn't have passports then, right? And ID cards. And then they act contrary to that in order to deceive the non-Muslims with the intent of harming and killing the innocent people, the non-Muslims, right? He said that this person, as noted by the Prophet in a sound hadith, this person dies the death of hypocrisy. So this notion that Muslims are out, subversive elements in America, rappers are, you know, subversive elements, DJs have hidden bombs in their vinyl, you know, women who run track, they're trying to... I mean, even now in Harvard University, they have separate swimming times for men and women because of the Muslim community, and someone is saying this is an attempt to shareize America. I remember 40 years ago, you know, my mother telling me that when they went to college, they had separate swimming times for men and women, right, at Pepperdine University in Malibu, California. So why suddenly is that tradition forgotten and Islamic fundamentalism is invoked just when we're talking about separate swimming times for men and women. Uh, a, and a, a Six Flags Muslim Day is suddenly turned into some kind of, you know, gathering of violent extremists, men, little kids eating cotton candy and drinking pop. So I would say that definitely this concept is misunderstood. And the Prophet referred to spiritual jihad, jihad to be a father, to be a dedicated citizen, to be good to people, to look after the plight of the poor, the weak, um, to be concerned about others, all that is jihad nafs, the struggle of the soul.